Hi there, Star Wars Collectors, and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video. Welcome to episode 163 of Ask Boss Bounty. You know the drill by now. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday. I take your questions from the comment section below, do my best to answer them. So if you want to be featured on next week's episode, make sure you leave your question in the comment section below. And while you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. I just want to say a big thank you to my most recent subscribers. I've got a few new subscribers from my reveals video that I did earlier on in the week. That's sitting at 12 and a half thousand views, which is awesome. So thank you so much to everybody that has watched that. And as I say, thank you to my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Now, before we do get on to the first question of the week, I do have something that arrived in the post to my PO box from a very nice guy called Ben Mund. Now he was responsible for making me this a few months ago. This is a Bosk in Carbonite. And he has done the same for my son, Little Bosk. He contacted me on Twitter, asked Little Bosk which character he would like be put into Carbonite. And the figure that he chose to be put into Carbonite was... Wicket the Ewok. Okay, do you want to show the audience what was created for you by Ben? Thank you, Ben, once again. Really appreciate it. Oh, you want me to show it? Okay. So there you go. That is the Vintage Collection Wicket in a Carbonite block. And what, what have you got to say about it, Little Bosk? I think it looks more like Carbonite than the, than the Hasbro ones because the Hasbro ones look more like plastic. They do, yeah, and you've got a few examples here, haven't you? Um, should we just take a look at the at this first of all? Um, so Ben is a very, very talented guy. He um, obviously takes uh, one of the Carbonite blocks that's available, probably the one from uh, the Han Solo Black Series figure, I would imagine, the 3.75 inch Black Series figure. And then he does a, a bit of stuff to the figure to make sure he can fit in there, a bit of uh, sort of putty or clay work. I don't really know exactly how these things are done, but you know, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? And it's even got his spear there. You can see all the sort of um, sculpting work on the figure still coming through. And you've got that nice sort of silver and then like dark wash over it to make it look, uh, you know, really sort of realistic. And you know, you can just see Wicket there. Um, I think that's brilliant. Um, I think Ben was a little bit surprised that little boss chose Wicket, but I think it's an awesome, <laughs> <laughs> sort of quirky thing to choose to have in carbonite so little boss do you just want to show uh some of the other ones that we have from hasbro and we can just compare them so who's that that is who's that the mithril and where did, where did we get this one from the razor crest right so that came from the razor crest so what would you say that the major differences are between those the paint right and what does the paint do for this one what does it how does it help do you think it makes it more shiny yeah, it make, definitely makes it more shiny and um, more looking like carbonite. And, you know, in fact, these are actually really just quite plasticky, aren't they, when you think about it? There's no paint on these whatsoever. That is just one piece of moulded grey plastic. And you've got another one there to show as well, just to compare. Han Solo and Carbonite. Yeah, so that's the Han Solo and Carbonite. That is the one that came from the 3.75 inch Black Series. Um, obviously, it came with the playset as well with a magnet in it. And you can really see there that that has got more of a silvery sort of shine to it. Um, so there we go then. So that is, uh, you know, the Carbonite block of Wicket uh, made for Little Bosk by Ben. So what do you say, Little Bosk? Thank you, Ben. Now it's a really good present. Yeah, thank you, mate. He really loves it. And um, it's been in his room ever since he opened it. Uh, so I, I appreciate that, buddy. Um, and it goes very nicely with the one that you made for me of Bosk. So there you go. Um, ben does hang out on the Vintage Collection Facebook group, so I'm pretty sure that he's shown these off on that group. So, uh, you know, be sure to give his posts a like and what have you. But there you go. Thank you, Ben, mate. Appreciate it. Ben Leek says, great show as always, BB. Question for next week. If you had three wishes for the Vintage Collection line going forward, what would they be? So the first one would be to have more of a budget to allow for more newly tall figures. The second one would be that we have more world building pieces such as beasts and vehicles i know that's kind of cheating putting two in one and the third one would most definitely be to try and finish the 96 as best as possible or at least give us more new uh, original trilogy characters that we've never had before 
that would be my three wishes for the vintage collection. Roberto Pliego says, Hi Tim, great video. Thanks for everything. Keep up the great work. Question for next week. Do you think Hasbro will release a new 501st Trooper with the new Clone Trooper body? I think they could release a four pack like the one that they did for the 212th. Thank you. So yes, as you've probably seen from the Hasbro reveals and on my reveal video, they did announce a four pack of 212th using the new Clone Trooper body. And it's it's gone down with mixed sort of feelings from the fans because I think it's based on the um, animated, you know, the Clone Wars style paint scheme, but on a realistic body. And they're sort of making a hybrid of the two. He's missing the black band around the helmet and things like that. And whilst I know these are pain points for some collectors out there, for me, I'm just glad that we've got this new clone and they're going to be starting to do them. So if they've done the 212th, Roberto, I would imagine that the 501st, wouldn't be too far behind. I was actually quite surprised that the that we got that 212th announced so quickly after we got the clone announced. Um, so that reveals was all good for me. Yes, of course, there are accuracy issues and what have you, but I am sure that they're going to be using that now for various different types of battalions and things like that, which if you're a fan of the, you know, the, the Clone Wars era and Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, all that kind of stuff, then you know, we're in we're in for a bit of a treat in terms of the amount of clones that we're gonna get. Jenko T says, very informative episode, Tim, as always. Question for next week with Star Wars Celebration just around the corner. What are your expectations for the show? Not only the figure reveals and the like, but an, as an overall experience. A new movie being announced, perhaps. So yeah, with Celebration, um, obviously you've got the, the figure aspect of it, but I think, you know, it's more to do with, um, you know, the, the, the sort of media, films, TV shows, comic books, all that kind of stuff that they announced at Celebration. So I'm hoping that obviously we'll get to see um, more of the new Ahsoka series because I think Mando season three would already have been on by then. So, you know, we'll be looking forward. Skeleton crew, maybe we'll see a trailer for that. That would be pretty good. Anything beyond that, I don't think we'll see footage for necessarily. Maybe we'll get some more info about Andor season two. And when that's going to drop and yeah perhaps the announcement of a um unnamed movie who knows man exciting exciting times purple yoda says bad batch question when is hunted rumored and honestly could we see a wave with the remaining crew or will it take years such a shame if that's the case so in terms of the hunter figure he is going to be in the first sort of like mainline wave of the year not including the return of the jedi reissues uh, he was part of an announcement a while ago, but the rest of the figures in that wave have been announced on the most recent reveals. And it was very odd for them to say that they're not going to be taking pre-orders on those. So if you're in the UK, I don't think we're going to be able to pre-order them. If you're in the US, you're not going to be able to pre-order them individually. But if you go on to Entertainment Earth, use the link in the description below, you are able to order the case, which means you will get a couple of duplicate figures in there, but you will get the whole wave. And um, yeah, these are the figures that are included in that wave on the screen now. As I say, link is in the description below. As for the other members of the Bad Batch, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get just a whole wave of them. I think it will probably take a couple of years to get them all out. I have heard rumours, or there was a rumour a little while ago, that we might see one more this year. Um, apart from that, I think it will be 2024 that you might get another two, perhaps. James Andrew says, with Black Crescenton pretty much a given this year, do you think there is a chance of us seeing Gungi? A Wookiee and a Jedi that is too good a character for Hasbro to miss out, surely. So I think, um, you know, for me, the Bad Batch Season 2 is a little bit hit and miss. I did enjoy the episode, uh, the last episode with, with the Wookiee Jedi, Gungi, I think his name is. Um, in terms of getting a figure for him, I think, you know, I, I would say probably not, especially this year. I think that figure would require all new tooling, perhaps. I think he's somewhere in between you know, Chewy and Wicket here, maybe he's about so high. Um, so I don't think there's another figure out there that they could sort of steal parts from to, to make that figure. But you're right, it's quite a sort of meaningful character in that show. I think he may have been in another show as well, Rebels or the Clone Wars. I can't really remember, but uh, certainly, you know, it's pretty cool to have a Wookiee Jedi indeed. So, uh, but I, yeah, unfortunately, I can't really see it happening in figure form, certainly this year anyway. Tyler Vargas says, hey boss, just want to say great job on all the videos that you do. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and collector of action figures, mostly just for the Rebels and the Empire. Quick question, would Hasbro ever release Iden Versio from Battlefront 2? To me, I think it would go well with the Imperial Forces set, but most of all, we will get a card back of Iden Versio. 
which makes Star Wars fans happy. May the force be with you as always, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine the card back for it now. It'd be awesome. I would really like that figure myself. I enjoyed the game. I think they're gonna have to do the new TIE Fighter pilot before they sort of go ahead and do uh, Iden Versio. I'm not too sure how many of the parts it could it could sort of use, but I, I, I get the feeling that they could use a lot of it. And um, I just feel that that's probably the way they're gonna go. I, I can't see them, you know, would we want an Iden Versio using parts of that current TIE Fighter pilot? I don't think I would, to be honest. I'd want it to be new. So I think we're gonna probably have to wait until they do an all new uh, TIE Fighter pilot. Joe says, hey BB, question for next week. Since Hasbro love their clone repaints, what are your top choices for a brand new sculpt that you wouldn't mind getting repaints of? I wouldn't mind an updated Clone Republic Commando sculpt or a Rebel Pilot sculpt. Wouldn't mind an Alien 4-pack like a Wookiee or Trandoshan 4-pack. We could even get combinations like that Trandoshan Rebel Pilot, Feresk Sat, is that how you pronounce that? Wouldn't mind a bigger improved version of the Turbo Tank too. Oh yeah, man. Love to hear your thoughts. So I think for me, it'd probably be um, a new Jedi buck so that we have that sort of Jedi body going forward i think a lot of the jedis that they release just for me aren't good enough or their um you know the the articulation is is outdated now and we're going to get onto a question about articulation in a second actually uh, and that's a, that's a that's sort of a good example of what i'm going to be talking about so jedis for me i think pilot's another one i mean we've got the luke pilot which is a good one i would love for them to kind of use that to give us some other pilots like an updated wedge and things like that some of the other pilots from the uh, you know the Battle of Yavin and what have you. You know I'd love I'd love all of that. So, but for me, I think if there's one that I think that really need to do, it's it's a new Jedi. P Diddy eighty two says great video as always. BB question for next week for the newer collectors like me. Could you explain briefly what the differences are between old style and new style joints on TVC figures? The obvious one I can tell is the rocker on the ankle is a new addition. What are the other updates that should be easy to spot for a TVC collector? This request might be simple or basic to a seasoned collector, but not always so for newer collectors who don't have lots of older figures to compare against. Just a nice to know if it's worth picking up some older figures or maybe hanging on for an updated, improved version. Thanks. No problem, buddy. Absolutely no problem. Um, yeah, I'll just go through a, a few of the obvious ones that we've had over the years. So this is uh, Moff J. Gerard and he has what's called the swivel arms. <laughs> So um, you can see there that it's like a cut at the elbow and it just swivels like that. Um, and then it was updated. Uh, this is Captain Nida. So this is another officer. He has the um, hinge at the elbow allowing for sort of swivel and up and down motion, which is good. Um, also with the heads, um, the old style heads were like on a ball, like so. So the head would just literally roll around on that ball. But now they have a thing called the barbell, which you can see in the helmet of Fett here. So that's like a, you know, like a, a dumbbell. Some people call them dumbbells or barbells. It's basically two balls on the end of a pin. One of them sits inside the helmet and the other one sits inside the neck. And that allows you to get sort of loads of range of motion in terms of, you know, moving the head on the one ball and on the other. So that's pretty cool. But even this FET, even though he came out, um, what, last year? Or, yeah, I think it was last year. Even this guy is now out outdated compared to what we're getting. And that is because he has the old style hips. So that is basically a hinge on that hip there. Um, and new figures, or up-to-date figures, have this new, um, very much like what they have in the neck this barbell on the hips so it's more more of like a pin and a ball and it just makes it a lot easier to sort of move his hips around and what have you and get him into better poses and as you mentioned yeah we've got the rocker ankles rocker ankles have actually been around for quite a while some of the figures from the 3.75 inch black series had rocker ankles it's just for some reason on other figures they seem to go backwards in that respect uh, but not everybody likes rocker ankles but i i tend to like them i think it's much easier to pose a figure with with rocker ankles um, and then and then you don't really need the the peg hole sometimes with the rocker ankles the, the the peg holes can be a bit short and what have you but um, yeah so that's sort of the main differences really obviously a lot of figures have hinges at the wrists now where before it's literally just a swivel so yeah I hope you found that useful freed collect says hey BB long time viewer but first time commenter question for next week 
Any recommendations on finding better weapons for our figures when displaying them, custom prints or some other way? A lot of the weapons that are issued seem to be too few when army building or just too rubbery, but maybe that's just me. Thanks and keep up the awesome work you do for the community. So yeah, this is something that's been in like the Lego community for a very long time now in that, you know, people would do like custom weapons for them because with Lego, you get like the standard blasters and what have you. Um, I'm not too aware of anyone that does it for the 3.75 inch collectors apart from uh, sort of like repo weapons for the original sort of Kenner figures and what have you and Action Force figures and things like that. I'm sure they're out there and especially with the rise of 3D printing, I'm sure there's people out there. But in terms of official ones, I think the, uh, what was it, the Saga Legends line, I think it was, used to come with like this little sort of filing cabinet or locker or whatever um, that used to have like six or seven weapons in there as like extras to the figure. If I can find an image, I will throw them up on the screen for you now so you can see what I'm talking about. Wyvern says, hi boss, really enjoy the vids. Question for next week. Do you think we'll see another release of the TVC 231 Stormtrooper? I'm surprised that such a popular figure and an army builder is not available in bigger numbers. It is out of stock everywhere and they are selling for high prices on eBay. So in the UK, I'm not sure if they're gonna, we're gonna be getting any more of those, but if you're in the US, once again, Entertainment Earth do have them on their website for arrival this month in February at some point. So if you wanna order those, they are available. Link in the description below to that listing. Um, that is where you can get them. I have no idea of when they will do them again, if ever. So, you know, if you don't have them, it's probably wise that you, you know, you, you get them while you can. Patreon supporter Gary Moore says, enjoy this every Sunday. Thank you, Gary. Keep up the good work. Question for next week. Why are the Hasbro exclusives for Star Wars Celebration so weak versus those for cons such as SDCC? Don't get me wrong, the Vader figure is pretty good, but compared to the multi-pack of exclusive figure box set, it just seems disappointing for fans that attend a Star Wars only event i'm gonna to have to disagree with you there gary very quickly because i don't i don't think the vader is pretty good i think it's pretty awful <laughs> and it's not just because it's a six inch figure or black series or whatever i'm not being biased there but when i saw that i just thought well you know who wants a red darth vader i, I don't know i don't know i just think they could have done something better for revenge of the jedi rather than trying to recreate how he kind of looks on the poster but anyway in terms of star wars celebration and sdcc I don't really know too much about it, but you know, just the first thing that sort of springs to mind is that SDCC is kind of like historically the, the thing that sort of more toy companies have gone to, I think, whereas Star Wars Celebration may be centered around a little bit more of like the media and the, you know, the films and the TV shows, cosplayers, panels, that, that kind of thing, I think. I don't know, I've never been to an SDCC and I've only ever been to the One Celebration. And when I did go to the One Celebration here in the UK, I was just really trying to sort of get some autographs and things like that, you know, and um, and, look, and look around the convention. But um, yeah, that's that's the only thing I can think of really. And, you know, hopefully that's not the only reveal for Star Wars Celebration. Hopefully they'll do something else as well, but we'll have to wait and see. The Collector says, hey Bosk, I know we are all excited about who's gonna come out on top in March. So my two questions are, would you like to see a similar March Madness style tournament for beasts, play sets and vehicles? Maybe this could help like the TVC tournament does. And question two, do you think for the return of the Jedi 40th, we'd get a larger version of the hard to get mouse droid and salacious, making the card normal size, differentiates the original release, allows most who didn't get it a chance to own them. So in terms of the first question, yeah, I think a March Madness bracket for anything the Vintage Collection would be awesome. Beast play sets, vehicles. You know, I don't want to cause too much work for the SWTVC guys and all that, but come on guys, you know, you're slacking. Let's do one for Beast play sets and, you know, world building stuff maybe. I think that might be quite difficult to sort of run though with all the different things that people would come up with, different versions of things and, and things like that. But it's not a bad idea and certainly something to think about. In terms of the second question, I honestly don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, if you were to put that salacious crumb, let me just move him out of the way. If you were to put that salacious crumb on a bigger card, a normal standard size card, it, it, I think it would look a bit weird. Um, I don't think people would want to pay the price Hasbro would want for it in terms of producing that. I really just don't think that's going to happen. And, and to be honest, these mini cards, you know, I, I don't think they're going to happen again either. And, you know, to get that mouse droid and, and the salacious crumb, in that format, you know, that Death Star playset was the perfect way to do it. Convention exclusive. 
And to be honest, I think that convention exclusive would have sold without the two mini cards anyway. Just the, what is it, uh, 10 other figures or however many there are, 12 figures in that in that pack with all the revenge variants. I think it would have sold just as well just with those. So I think these kind of were like an extra. The ultimate annoying thing was is that they did number them. Uh, that was that was bad form because there are people that, you know, want the whole run of the vintage collection, including everything that's numbered. And that's that, yeah, that was just poor form. But yeah, I, I can't see them doing it again, mate. Not not like that anyway. All right, then, guys, that's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I said before, if you do have a question for next week's episode and you'd like to be featured in the video, don't forget to leave your question in the comment section below. Thanks to my, all my new subscribers, as I mentioned. And if you want to become a Patreon or a channel member and receive extra perks on the channel, uh, you get to be a member of the private Discord, early access videos, all that kind of stuff. Check out the links in the description below. And thank you to my current Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support is a great deal. And it was very good to meet some of you at Echo at the weekend. I had a great time. Thank you all for watching, guys. And we shall see you on the next one.